So, we'll talk about three things, disruption, innovation, and a path forward. Who loves disruption? I do. I've been at it for a long time. Um, over the centuries, our industry has been rife with disruption. Some small, some epic. Small, maybe. Epic, yes. Does anybody know who this fellow is? Joins us at a lot of conferences. That's right, Gutenberg. Many of us were young when he disrupted the, our universe. And it wasn't just simply a printing revolution or about movable type. It was all about a scientific revolution, signaled the beginning of the Renaissance, the Re Reformation, the Age of Enlightenment, and it promised literacy for all. So it certainly uh, shook our business models up from the beginning. Um, I'm sure we know this guy a little bit more modern, Tim Berners-Lee. Was it just about the World Wide Web? I don't think so. It was the dawn of the digital age for all of us. It created publishing platforms and digital contents and new ways to use content, to atomize content, created new business models and global availability. Are we done with this one yet? I don't think so. Nope. It's again changing business models and the way we work, the way we do business. Uh, it's created new opportunities, new workflows, and new partners. Uh, so this one's going to be a, a bit of a ride, so collaboration's really important. And the things that's changed, that have changed publishing have also changed Copyright Clearance Center. Uh, at one time, we were all simply publishers, editors, marketers. CCC was a quiet licensing company north of Boston, a reproduction rights organization, and a rights broker. Uh, but in addition to our day jobs now, uh, we're technology companies leveraging new tools to deliver new products to new markets while still looking over the horizon for the next signal of disruption. Technology creates its own subset of standards, data points, identifiers, and labels that drive and define the new workflow and the new business models. So that's why uh, conferences like this are so important. ALPS, STM, UKSG, the big book fairs. This is we, where we learn the new lexicon that drives our business. We come to hear folks like Ed Pence talk about DOIs, cross-ref, cross-fund. We've heard Howard Ratner go on about ORCIDs and how important those are. We learn all about metadata. Um, ISNI, Ringgold and their institutional identifiers, Hanari, Research for Life, Creative Commons and the various licenses under their banner, and new, newly the STM licenses. And we hear from the vendors that all make up the workflow too, Aries, Scholar One, Bench Press, um, all part of the publishing workflow. So now more than ever with the open access disruption, it's time to harness these elements uh, to feed the new machine. Um, it was at this very conference two years ago, just post Finch, when Andrea Powell of Cabby led a session on the final day by invoking REM. It's the end of the world as we know it, she said, and I feel fine. Um, so two, two years later, I still feel fine. Um, open access then seemed to be here at last, and it was time to get down to business, and she said next to her panel in the room, how are we going to make this happen? Um, so in two short years, I think we've come a long way and we're starting to integrate the disruption of open access into our everyday business models. It was also at that time that we realized, even though we'd been in this business for a long time at CCC, that it was time to retool and uh, rethink some of our products and strategies and partnerships. So I want to make this not so much of, of an infomercial, well, maybe a wee bit, um, but a case study that's all about collaboration, partnerships, and sustainable value-added solutions. So if you joined me last night, uh, I gave a brief five-minute presentation for the Innovation Award on RightsLink uh, for Open Access, our new platform. So some of these slides are a bit repetitive. I'll try to breeze through those for visitors that were uh, here last night. Um, others I'll slow down a little bit to uh, exemplify the workflow. Um, so uh, at the top are some of the stakeholders and the folks involved in the dis disruption, but also the folks that need new interoperability, visibility, transparency. Um, all, of them have, all of them and you and us have created uh, the recipe for disruption. So new solutions are required. It's a time to listen, always and ongoing, uh, but it's also a time to act and, as Andrea implored, get down to business. I talked a little bit last night about our history in the open access space. Um, and the need to retool, um, resulting in an ongoing uh, stakeholder dialogue uh, that continues and will continues for some, continue for some time. We've hosted webinars, forums, roundtables, get-togethers, cocktail sessions, bringing together thought leaders, you all, so we can hear from the stakeholders, hear from the audience, hear from publishers what's important, chance to look over the horizon, and make sure that we're keeping features and functionality fresh. 
Um, we've had over 2,000 uh, registrants at our free webinars, and we launched an OA Resource Center with ALPS at the beginning of uh, January, where we try to filter and bring, bring together all the breaking news, research, policy uh, that's affecting our marketplace so that you all can make better and more informed decisions. We've had over 45,000 visitors since uh, January, continues today. Here's what it looks like. Please drop in, give us your thoughts, feedback, contributions, what, tell us the things that are important to you. Um, again, last night I talked a little bit about the new platform. Uh, the great thing about it is we've gone from a custom software solution 10 short years ago to now one where it's platform-based, it's a standard configurable offering, and through the magic sauce of standard APIs, we're able to now connect and glean all that metadata and information that's important to drive your business models. Uh, all about the metadata about manuscripts, author metadata, uh, manuscripts and payment systems so that you and your author have a good financial view into all activity. And then partner integrations that are more and more important because they too in the workflow are collecting uh, this data along the way that begins that author manuscript publisher interaction. So we've recently um, involved, been involved in deep integrations with Aries, Scholar One, Bench Press. Thank you all. Uh, we, we continue to need that type of collaboration and partnership. And that's all with the goal of driving the flexible pricing and discount models that you need to run your open access business. The prices and models that you have out there today are likely to change. It's the time for experimentation. You need a flexible and agile platform and partners that can address the current state of your marketplace, but also look over the horizon. And then we've got to address a, clo a global uh, customer author uh, marketplace or institution marketplace and provide multi-currency payment and invoicing options. So it never stops. Product roadmap looks well out 12, 18 months for us. Oh, the goal always is to simplify the workflow. There's a lot of disruption in the workflow now. There's a lot of friction uh, created throughout by all the stakeholders. Um, our goal is to uh, flatten out the workflow, make it simple all the way from that APC, color charge, price charge, estimate, uh, making an offer to the author, and then handling the payment, uh, whether it's by credit card or invoice, as seamlessly and as painlessly as possible. So by integrating early on in the workflow with uh, those Aries and Scholar One and Bench Press systems, we're able to tap into the rich metadata available at the dawn of the, uh, the article or the book chapter life. Um, we're collecting that metadata all along the way, all those standards and metadata that I talked about. Uh, right out of the chute, we're able to generate a quick price estimate so that author knows what they're getting into, knows what type of license they're choosing, and can uh, move in and become part of the workflow. Again, very simplified upon uh, acceptance of the manuscript. We understand more now about that author, their affiliations, their allegiances, what organizations they belong to, and what discounts they might uh, be, uh, have be available to them. Uh, so all the way we're plugged in and we can present the author that price. Um, the author can then log into RightsLink um, and then uh, be presented with their final APC, which is going to include VAT taxes. And if you're, uh, especially in the Eurozone, you know how complex taxes are and are getting in 2015. Um, then uh, simply the author selects the currency of their transaction. We support up to seven global currencies. Uh, the author can apply any, any additional um, discount, uh, waivers, promotion codes that you've issued on their behalf. Uh, RightsLink adjusts the final pricing, pay, pay by way invoice or credit card again. So again, we talked a little bit about the external stakeholders, and last night I mentioned these folks, so I'll probably move quickly here. But from your organization, publishers, these are the folks to bring to the table during implementation because we want to capture the information from them that will make up uh, your instance of RightsLink and tailor it, configure it uh, to your specific needs. So bring those folks to the table that are involved in the pricing rules. Uh, we can, we can uh, present open access page or color charges, uh, uh, any other fees that you're interested in uh, capturing. Um, we can identify uh, through that uh, API interface their member status, their affiliation, uh, do they, uh, are they eligible for a geographic discount, and, um, and then any other promotional codes that you might have created from your dashboard to further experiment or incent that author. Uh, manuscript metadata, again, using that standard M API, we're connecting, so bring those folks to the table that interface with those manuscript production and production systems, any other systems, so that we can capture all the metadata that's important for you to run your business. 
Um, the author experience, folks. We want to make it as easy for the author and to keep, uh, keep your authors attracted to your process by m making the uh, rights link and payment processes available in their workflow, in their time uh, frame. So they can pay by credit card, their own or their institutions. They can be invoiced by CCC uh, in, in multiple currencies. And then we want to provide them context-sensitive help throughout the process. So tell us what your authors need, what they want, what they're looking for, so they can speed through the process at their leisure. Um, and then the transactions can reflect all that key metadata too for the authors, uh, the type of license, their ORCID ID, their affiliation, are they a membership, member or subscriber. Let us handle the back office stuff. This is where it gets complex, costly, and messy. Um, uh, credit card invoice, uh, credit card transactions, easy to handle. Uh, invoice is a little bit more complex, but let us take uh, responsibility for the billing, uh, the tax collection as your agent. Um, let us uh, uh, worry about uh, bad debt. And we're so confident in our process as a 37-year-old transaction history that we'll offer a guarantee to publishers. Uh, we're already at 99.8 or 7% collection rate. Uh, we'll offer you a guarantee so that you can speed to the publication process and not worry about collecting fees. Let us worry about it. Um, reporting, uh, this is what you need to run your business. Uh, there's a great view in, uh, real-time view into all reporting, all transactions for various stakeholders within your organization who benefit from this uh, data. And there's also uh, a view in uh, for, for, the, for the authors so that they can manage their business on an ongoing basis. Uh, and all that metadata, all that information that we collect along the way finds its way into the reporting tool. So uh, quickly as we uh, approach the end, I wanted to be sure to show you uh, what the author sees, what the author interface looks like. When they get that initial offer, here's what it looks like. If you look at the top banner, this is a persistent metadata bar, and gives you an idea for all that rich data that we're collecting from the very beginning of the manuscript relationship with the author. You can brand the upper left-hand corner with your logo or journal logo, but just look at all the metadata available to collect that ultimately finds its way into your reporting tool so you can better manage your business. Then the author sees the prices they're signed up for. If it's just APCs, that's all they'd see. If there are other charges, you make that selection and you set the prices, obviously. Um, there's a lot of ways to impact that rack rate pricing, if you will, uh, that you control, and that's uh, different affiliations, membership, or promotional <laughs> codes that you issue uh, to give further incentive or price flexibility to your authors. So a lot of control that you get at your dashboard. Um, discounts are applied. The author always knows what the original price was and what the price is going to be at the end. Uh, so they have a very visual view um, of all the different boxes they've checked or the metadata that we gathered that uniquely identify this transaction. Um, the author selects the payment model. They can select their own personal credit card, their institutional credit card, or um, add credit cards at any time, or select invoicing, and uh, again, uh, CCC will issue that, uh, that invoice with all the pertinent tax data and uh, um, uh, make mention of our, our partnership with you, and then be responsible for all the back office function of billing collections, all that stuff. Um, uh, other uh, management tools so you and the author can manage their relationship and their history over time. If you've got any terms and conditions that you want the author to accept as they approach checkout, you're able to bake in uh, customized terms and conditions which the author typically has to agree to to move forward. Um, very close to order completion, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Author and or your institution. Um, this will be the comprehensive view with all discounts applied, all taxes applied. This is the final bill that they'll see. Um, again, the publisher has infinite price flexibility from the dashboard to create promotional codes, one time, one off, uh, in perpetuity, um, uh, to give incentive or further discounts to that author. Always about the author care. Um, on the back end, uh, publisher uh, promotion reporting. So not only do you get a view of all the financial information uh, that you've collected along the way and the metadata, but the efficacy of your promotions. And there's various ways to sort through the promotional codes that you issue to track the efficacy or um, who's taken advantage of those different promotional codes. So again, great chance to experiment and try new pricing schemes or uh, make, make your offers attractive to, to authors. 
Um, publisher account deposit setting, so if they're drawing down from institutions or you're allowing that from your, uh, for, as your publishing organization, um, we can track that through the system as well. So how much uh, have, have different institutions paid over time? And this is in, in uh, great functionality. It's only going to increase. We're having an institutional roundtable here in the UK, I think in January, uh, where we're going to gather additional information from the institutions about their needs. <coughs> how, how, sorry, how, can, how we can support them. Um, always the author has a view into their transaction history, hoping they're doing business uh, through us and through you for a long time, so a great tool to manage and track uh, and, and uh, ensure their payments. As always is important, we tailor customer service uh, uh, to you, the publisher, but also to your authors uh, through email, chat, uh, live, um, almost always available um, real live bodies that are in tune with your customer needs, your author needs, and uh, they go to the premium uh, queue when authors call in and need support throughout the, uh, the payment process. Uh, so in summary, uh, right, why RightsLink for open access? Because it's scalable. It's a compliant business to customer solution. Um, it's, it's easy to plug into. Um, you can be up and implemented in a couple of short months. Um, it plugs in uh, to all the appropriate systems that are in your workflow currently, and um, the publisher controls payment methods and channels, VAT billing collections, and all that back office stuff. If you're using RightsLink on the back end for clearing permissions on your retail site, you can also express those rights that you now have for content that is either for free, for fee, open access, or whatever. So it forms uh, that continuous loop from manuscript creation all the way through to your websites where your content lives forever. It's a scalable solution, again, so whether you're at the very beginning of your journey, uh, early on, or if you're an established publisher, um, CCC has the infrastructure to support you in any mode and uh, will for the future. Here's some of the folks currently using RightsLink. Um, some old, some new. I hope that you'll uh, uh, be one of the newest, and I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>